guys, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is D'Lo and I have another video for you guys. This is actually another Spider-Man Homecoming theory. So this is, it's been a few months since I've done one of these. Uh, back in January I did my first uh, theory video. It was on Spider-Man Homecoming, the first one. And now we have a lot of news coming out about Spider-Man Homecoming 2. So I don't think these are spoilers. This is just my theories speculation but it's based off of potential plot leaks okay so if you don't want to hear about spider-man homecoming 2 what it might become what it might be based on then um there might be a couple things in here that give you a little bit too much feel free to watch my original spider-man homecoming theory video because it's about to get real okay so a lot of what i talked about in that that video it looks like it might be coming true here in the second one based on the news we're getting. So let's get into this real quick. We already know that Mysterio is going to be the villain in Spider-Man Homecoming 2. So I posted not long ago a video explaining that Jake Gyllenhaal has in talks with Marvel to play Mysterio and we believe that that is confirmed at this point. Now, if these rumors are true and Mysterio is a big bad, the rumor here is that he's gonna be the primary villain but he's not going to be the biggest villain in the movie and that there might be a twist where there's a bigger fish in the sea. There's a bigger bad and Mysterio's working for him to steal technology from Stark Industries, which Pepper Potts will be leading. Um, and so we don't know where Tony is. This is coming after Avengers uh, Infinity War Part Two. That's not the official name, but we're just calling it Infinity War Part Two, the next Avengers, Avengers 4. If this is the case, then there's someone up there and it's supposed to be a huge spoiler and it's gonna be a huge surprise to the fans to find out that he's working for someone or we will know right off the bat that he's working for someone and not know who it is. It's very clear that they've been trying to set up the Sinister Six for a very long time now and that they are currently working on setting up the Sinister Six. I talked about this in my previous video with the homecoming theory. It's very clear they're setting up the Sinister Six, but how are they gonna do that and who's gonna put that together? So the obvious conclusion, if you're gonna say there's a bigger bad in the Spider-Man universe and he's pulling all these strings, the obvious conclusion would be that it's the Green Goblin. It would be Norman Osborn of Oscorp is trying to steal Stark tech. So he hires on Quentin Beck, a super villain or an enhanced villain someone who's able to get jobs done, like a contract villain, doing those dirty jobs for Norman Osborn, for Oscorp, and maybe he's not even the Green Goblin yet. Maybe he's just this big old businessman who's who doesn't care about the methods, he just cares about the results. He's trying to get this done, and he's not yet at the Green Goblin stage, but he's kind of sinister. He's trying to work on all of these things that are going to lead to more supervillains. And the Green Goblin is reputable enough that that would be the obvious conclusion. People would think, when are we going to get the Green Goblin? That's going to be the, everyone's next thought, is we want the Green Goblin. So, for it to be a big bad governing Mysterio, it would have to be someone who's interested in Stark Tech. It would have to be someone in the field of interest in Stark Tech. Not just to resell, it's got to be somebody who's highly interested because of the technology aspect of it. And so, I would think that that would mean they would have to be technologically savvy, business savvy, interested in power, and not interested in the means. They would have to be not interested in the law or breaking the law. So obviously we're looking at someone who's super smart. We're obviously looking at someone who's super wealthy in a position of power inside of not only New York City, but in relations and connections to the criminal underbelly of New York City. Otherwise, how would they have gotten a hold of Mysterio in the first place, right? But what about the possibility of another individual with similar motivations and qualifications and the same potential impact on the story? Now, if we look back at a quote from Kevin Feige about the future of the MCU and the Spider-Man Homecoming sequel, let's take a look at this real quick. io9 did an interview with Kevin Feige where he was asked about the potential for a TV character, a Marvel TV character like Netflix, or any of their other TV properties to cross over into the movies or vice versa. Would those characters' presence on the small screen eliminate their ability to cross back over into the big screen? And Kevin Feige's response is super interesting. Check this out. Kevin Feige says, not necessarily. The future's a long time. So the truth is, I don't really know, but there are a lot of TV shows being made and hopefully will continue to make a lot of movies. At some point, there's going to be a crossover. Crossover, repetition, or something. End quote. So they have no immediate plans, right? And this is a while ago. So this was May 5th, 2017, okay? So this was May of last year. This is one year ago. They had no immediate plans to cross over the TV shows with the movies, but we know that they have plans out to 2022. And we know that they have intention to go forward beyond that. Those are just the released dates of films that are in the works or in the, in the project right now. So that's their current pipeline. 
And Kevin Feige has stated before that he tries not to think beyond five years. He tries to have a five-year plan for each phase, right? Five years, and then there's going to be something fresh. Five years, and then something fresh. And it's like, that's his process. That's how Marvel thinks with the films, which is great because it doesn't have us going on rabbit trails that could potentially fizzle out and never get there. Five years is like a long time, but it's not, a, it's not that long. So you can work on films and get it to a certain point. You can get Iron Man 1, you can get Captain America, you can get Thor, you can get Iron Man 2, then you can get the Avengers. You know, like you can get things done. And what he's saying here is we could have TV characters from the Marvel TV properties, any of them, cross over in the not so distant future. This was one year ago when he said this. Now we're looking at a project that is still one year out. I think one year from now, we'll probably be looking at Spider-Man Homecoming 2. And this is really interesting. Two years from his quote, we might be seeing the very first small screen to big screen translation of a character. And this is what I think might happen. So to fit the qualifications we talked about earlier, there is in fact a TV villain that exists because all the TV shows are continuity. They are in the MCU. So any of the heroes in the big screen, any of the heroes in the small screen, they share a universe. They're not separate. The only ones that are separate are the Fox properties, right? The X-Men. With that being said, we have a villain that is currently in existence that is a Spider-Man villain. And his name is Wilson Fisk. So Wilson Fisk is very much like Norman Osborn, not in character, but in role. So his role is that he is a big, bad villain that contracts other villains in the Marvel Comics universe to be his tech guys, to be his grunt work, to be his muscle. And he himself is wicked strong, stupid rich. He is the boss for the Spider-Man criminal underbelly in New York City. That's who he is. And we've seen him in Daredevil. We've seen him in Daredevil 2. And he's been mentioned in a few of the other Netflix properties but he's originally a Spider-Man villain. And this is very important because in the past, neither Wilson Fisk nor Norman Osborn were the first people to bring together the Sinister Six. If I'm not mistaken, that was Dr. Octopus. But they have done several iterations of the Sinister Six since the original, with different characters rotating in and out of the rosters. And then the person that brings them together is different at each phase of that story. So at one point, the Green Goblin did bring together the Sinister Six and was a member of the Sinister Six as well. But there was also a story arc, and this happened in the Spider-Man animated TV series with um, Avi Arad and Stan Lee, they, that the one that they wrote together, from the 90s, had Wilson Fisk put together the Sinister Six. And so even though he wasn't part of that six, he was the crime lord doing his role as the, as the boss pulling the puppet strings and all these super villains march around him because he's stupid rich, he's gonna pay them really well. And, uh, and they all hate Spider-Man, they have that in common. So they have mutual interests, a lot of money coming their way, and they take orders from Wilson Fisk because he's the untouchable. I think that that would be amazing to get Vincent D'Onfrio back from the Netflix series and have him play a hand in the Spider-Man Homecoming sequel. I've been hoping for that for a very long time. My old Spider-Man Homecoming video talked about Vincent D'Onfrio playing the Kingpin in the Spider-Man Homecoming sequel and how that would fit. And I think that's a massive role. If you want to get Wilson Fisk, you got to do him right. And I'll tell you one thing. If you haven't seen the Daredevil series, you are missing out big time. Vincent D'Onfrio was the best part of that show. And it was a great show, but he was the best part. He was amazing. And the perfect Wilson Fisk. There has never been a more accurate or perfect Wilson Fisk ever. Vincent D'Onfrio is the kingpin. There's rumors that Alistair Smythe is going to be in the sequel. He, we know, was the technology right hand of the kingpin in not only the comics, but in the animated series as well. He's had a lot of ties to that. You know, he became the spider slayer, but it was through the access to Wilson Fisk's resources as his trusted right hand. It would be incredible to have Fisk be the guy pulling the strings of not only Mysterio, but then also maybe to have him get in contact with some of the other guys that are in the area. The Tinkerer, you could have the Scorpion, you could have the Shocker, you could have the Vulture. These guys are all in the MCU already. And then you get in and you have Vincent D'Onfrio, the Kingpin. And he's such a savage. I love that character. And I love his relationship with Spider-Man. Spider-Man can't get him. And even Daredevil can't can't quite nail him. You know, he gets him locked up. He gets back out. He's running the city from prison. He gets out and he's even more mad at Daredevil. He covers his tracks even better. It's such a good story. So even though I think that the Green Goblin could be the person pulling the strings if this rumor is true about Spider-Man Homecoming, 
that Mysterio is working for a bigger bad. I think that it's either A, going to be the Green Goblin, which would be the obvious choice, or B, a character who is just as equally qualified, the Kingpin, could also play that exact same role. All the same qualifications would apply. Big tech giant, huge rich dude, dangerous super villain, mastermind and puppet master to all the lower level villains. And when I say lower, I don't mean low level villains. I just mean villains in the Spider-Man universe who aren't the biggest of bads. Green Goblin and Wilson Fisk are big bads and that would be awesome. They are crime lords. If you want a Spider-Man franchise to work, you gotta have someone pulling the strings. So thank you guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I cannot wait to have this discussion with you and make sure to check out my homecoming video from January on Spider-Man Homecoming 1. That video is one of my most popular videos and I think you guys are gonna really like that. But this one as kind of a companion to that, I think you guys are gonna have a lot of fun. I can't wait to hear from you. Thank you guys. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legends.